Hey guys, well, welcome to the video. So today what I wanted to go over is essentially a 7950X3D slash process lasso tips and tricks video. And I essentially wanted to show you guys how you can extract a lot of performance out of your new X3D chip that you guys have probably gotten. And the reason why this is super important is because when uh, the 7950X3D first got announced and everyone saw that it wasn't going to be vCache on both chips, everybody immediately thought like, oh, this is going to be a nightmare for scheduling. There's going to have to be so many Windows issues. Nope, that's what Process Lasso is amazing for. And that's why I say that Process Lasso and the X3D chips, especially the dual CCD ones, were made for each other because it gives you so much autonomy over your entire operating system that I, I basically think it's a must if you're going to have the 7950X3D because it's almost like, why would you not? It's so simple to set up and it's so easy to use that I don't know why people are blowing it out of proportion and pretending like this is a difficult process you know, to use. So all you do, if you want to essentially bind all of your stuff to one CCD and then just leave it on that. So like, let's say you're doing streaming on one chip and then gaming on another chip. You just hit shift and then left click and then you go all the way down to the bottom and then you hit shift and then left click again and then that selects all of the processes for you and then let's say i want to bind this to the uh, vcache chip like oh i've got a, a bunch of games that i know can really benefit from it well i just unselect those cores if you're using hyper threading it'll be every other core so if this was like if i had hyper threading enabled core zero and core one would essentially be the same core, but the extra thread right here, the extra core. So core one would be a hyper thread, not an actual core. So it'd be zero, two, four, six would be the cores that you want to actually select for the game to run. And then you just hit okay. And then it swaps all of them over and that's it. That's all you have to do. Now you have all of your operating system swapped over to one CCD and you don't have to worry about it. If I close out of this, and then let's say I restart my system, Process Lasso will still remember the profile that I set for it. So it's super easy to set up. And uh, it, it honestly is just, why would you not want to have this much uh, amazing utility at your disposal when you're playing something like a game that's very uh, you know, sensitive to latency and performance? And so, for example, if I want to go and put it all on the other chip, right? Just unselect it and then hit OK, bam. All of the processes are set for it. There are a few processes like these white ones right here that are like Windows sensitive critical ones that you can only do uh, CPU sets for, which is like a soft affinity. And then there's only two that you can't set sets for, which is system and registry. But other than that, everything else is completely running on the non-CCD vCache chip. So that's an amazing thing to have at your disposal. And people might be asking like, oh, well, why would you want to do that? Why would you not want to let Windows uh, do stuff like that? Well, one benefit is that not only does it guarantee you uh, stability when you're playing your games, but it also reduces latency because nothing's running on those chips, on the vCache chip now. And so when I ran uh, latency mon, essentially my highest execution times are nearly uh, 10 times faster than what's running on the regular chip right now. And so if you're playing a game that's really latency sensitive, this is an amazing thing to do because yeah, why would you not want to like reduce your latency by such a drastic amount? And obviously it's like in the milliseconds here. So it's not exactly like that impressive in terms of like, it's not like we're talking 16 milliseconds versus eight, like a 120 Hertz monitor, but Hey, extra reduced latency is reduced latency for whoever cares about it and whoever wants it. And so that's the main thing too, but it's also amazing for streamers because I ran essentially a benchmark on my channel, which is Overwatch 2 at 500 FPS and OCCT, which is a stress test at the exact same time. And this chip runs so cold that I ran a, I ran a stress test at the same time that I'm running a very high demanding game like Overwatch 2 and the CPU didn't get above 75 degrees Celsius at any one point, which is just insane to think about considering how how demanding all of this workload, workload must be on the chip. But no, it works perfectly. And so it's sort of like, it's the best of both worlds is what AMD really kind of made this chip to be. 
And so, yeah, I would recommend that if you guys are like streamers or you're somebody that does a lot of like heavy uh, workload stuff and you also do gaming as well, or you kind of just, you know, don't exactly like to know that your uh, chips are kind of being interfered with when you're running games and stuff, then this is this is an amazing um, process and an amazing processor for you. And so another thing, too, that kind of you can use to counter a lot of arguments online is that if you look at the um, processes in terms of the uh, CPU frequency, you'll notice that the uh, Vcache chip tends to downclock itself a little bit when it's uh, starting to get a little bit hotter. Well, if we check out my temperatures right now, we'll see that it's like 36 or 37 degrees Celsius, right? So it's incredibly cool. Well, if we want to counter this problem where it's going below the actual base clock of the chip, so it's going below 4.2 gigahertz, well, if we want to protect ourselves from that, another trick that you can do is if you go into, I'll basically post these commands in the description so you guys can check it out for yourself. And then we go into here and then we hit apply for it and then we hit enter. Now, what that's going to do is it's going to cause a little more heat. So now we're at like 45. So we gained about uh, seven to eight degrees Celsius, right? But now our chip won't run below 4.2 gigahertz and it will opportunistically boost to 5.2 on every core that the algorithm feels is available. And so this helps you not only get a guaranteed all core turbo, which was not available on the um, 5800X3D, and it allows you to have essentially the peace of mind of not having to worry about scheduling issues, performance issues, anything like that. And so, yeah, guys, I hope that this video was super helpful for you. Um, if you guys have any questions or concerns or anything like that, let me know and, uh, you know, I'll probably answer them sometime soon. But anyway, guys, my name's Savaterix and have a good one.